Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about moments. So moments, or short for the moment of a force, is a tendency of that force to cause a rotation of a body in the form of an angular acceleration. So to illustrate this we're going to talk about two boxes, box A and box B. So both of them are sitting on an icy surface, so we're going to assume no friction. Uh, box A, I'm going to push in the middle of it. So if I push in the middle of the box, it would just tend to kind of slide forward, accelerate uh, in linear fashion. Box B, instead I'm going to push on the corner of the box. So if I imagine pushing on the corner of this box, it's not only going to slide, but it's also going to start to rotate because I'm not pushing in the center. So in the case of box B, that force tends to cause a moment. The moment is what causes the angular acceleration. All right, so often when we talk about moments, uh, we're talking about a special circumstance called pure moments. Uh, so we will often intentionally apply a set of forces uh, that will simply exert a net moment without exerting a net force. Uh, so this is called a pure moment or a torque. Um, and so something like this would be something like a screwdriver. Uh, so here we've got an electric screwdriver. Uh, and it's going to tend to rotate the screw. So that's what we want it to do. Uh, really what it is, if you look at the head of the screwdriver, it's going to be a bunch of forces going in different directions, but they all are going to tend to rotate the screw. So when we have this kind of combination of forces that are all going to tend to uh, cause rotation without any sort of linear acceleration, that is our pure moment. Um, so moments include both. So they can be the force are the moment of a force and these pure moments uh, which are often kind of more simple in our systems. Alright, so also we're going to talk about moments as vectors. So just as a force has both a magnitude and a direction, uh, a moment is going to have a magnitude and direction. It's also a vector. So the magnitude of the moment is related to the degree to which the force uh, or the pure moment would cause angular accelerations about a given point or axis. So the stronger the moment, the higher the magnitude, uh, the more kind of twisting force we're getting out of this. So these are going to be measured in units of a force times a distance. So that would be Newton meters in the metric system or foot pounds in the US customary system. The direction uh, of the moment uh, is going to show us the axis of rotation and the direction of rotation about that axis. So we're going to use something called the right hand rule. Uh, so if you imagine you've got your kind of twisting force, if you visualize that, you're going to have that rotating, uh, twisting about a certain axis. So this axis uh, is going to be actually the direction of our moment vector. So it's not the direction of the twist, it's the direction of the axis of rotation. And we're going to use the right hand rule. So take your right hand, curl your fingers in the direction of rotation and stick your thumb straight out. Your thumb is going to be sticking in the direction of the moment vector. So kind of positive around a given axis would be counterclockwise around the axis. Negative around a given axis is going to be uh, counterclockwise or clockwise. Negative is going to be clockwise. All right, so taking the moment about a point uh, is an important distinction from forces. So when we're calculating the moments, we need to choose a point we are taking the moment about uh, because both the magnitude and direction are going to be dependent upon the point we pick. So imagine we're looking down on the top of, the, of a door here. So I'm pushing in the middle of the door and imagine I've got the hinge uh, on the door over at point A. So in this case, if the hinge is over at point A, uh, I'm pushing in the middle, this door would tend to rotate counterclockwise uh, about point A. So that counterclockwise, it's gonna, this force is exerting a negative uh, moment, in the, or sorry, counterclockwise is exerting a positive moment in this case. Imagine instead I had the hinge over at point B. So if I put the hinge at point B, I'm taking the moment about that point. Now I've entirely changed the direction. So rather than rotating counterclockwise, I'm gonna be rotating counter or clockwise about point B. So the direction of the moment depends if I'm, rot uh, I'm taking the moment about point A. So if, do I put the hinge over there or do I put it at point B? 
the magnitude's also going to be important. So imagine I do something weird with my door. I put the hinge at point C. So I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle of the door. So now if I'm rotating about point C, it's going to be harder to open the door. And that's because I've got less moment uh, about point C. So, and you can experiment with this if you uh, try to push a door open by pushing on the side near uh, where the hinge is. It's a lot harder to open the door. That's because you're going to have a lower magnitude uh, for the moment of that force. So direction uh, in two dimensions, we've just got clockwise or counterclockwise. Counterclockwise in two dimensions is positive, uh, and then clockwise is negative. Uh, and in 2D, we can really just kind of sum up those uh, scalar values. So if I've got one moment that's positive, one that's negative, positive and negative, we just add the magnitudes together. All right, so let's talk about this in 3D. So in three dimensions, magnitude is going to stay the same, but now directions are more complex. Uh, and that's because in 3D, we can kind of rotate about any axis. So it's not just clockwise, counterclockwise. We have all sorts of directions. And you think about a plane. Uh, so a plane can uh, have roll, pitch, and yaw. Uh, and it can kind of rotate about any of those axes. Uh, and so if we've got moments acting on a plane in 3D, it can be more complicated uh, because we can't simply add the magnitudes together. We're going to need to add those moments together as vectors. So magnitude and direction are going to be important. All right, so that's all we have for today's introduction to moments. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.